Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ware Wendell, Executive Director of Texas Watch. We are a statewide nonpartisan nonprofit for over 25 years. We've advocated for the rights of policyholders. We are neutral on the issue today. First thing I'd like to say is we are blessed to have the Texas Gulf Coast. My family has a tradition of visiting the coast each and every summer. If you talk to my daughter, those are probably her favorite memories. Beyond that, the, the coast connects us to the world. If you look at our ports by tonnage moved, these are uh, Army Corps of Engineer numbers, Bureau of Transportation. We have five of the top 20 ports in the nation. Houston, number one, Corpus Christi, number three, Beaumont, 10, Freeport, 18, Port Arthur, 19, and then Texas City's right there at 26. So this is important to the state's economy, the nation's economy, the Texas Gulf Coast is. Uh, the economic benefit of the Gulf Coast, these are comptroller numbers, $642 billion in GDP. That is over 26% of the state's GDP is directly attributable to the Texas Gulf Coast. And then you've got that ripple effect that I was talking about. In terms of weather, every corner of our state experiences extreme weather risk. Half my family's from the Panhandle. Uh, we almost lost our family farm in the fires. Only the westerly winds out of Stennett saved us. I'm from Fort Worth. Speaker Guerin, Representative Turner will tell you we get hail. We get even tornadoes. Houston's been hit twice already. Derecho and Barrel now. Every corner of the state. So we can't let the insurance industry pit us against one another. We are one state. We are the Lone Star State. We will hang separately. I, I suggest that we hang together here. Um, in terms of rates, I'm very disappointed in the maximum recommendation. I hope that TDI takes a very close look at that and takes into consideration what is happening with inflation right now, under 3% CPI, and building cost. We should look at that as well. There's only so much blood in a turnip. We can't keep hitting the coast like this because people will not be able to live there. They will not be able to work there, and that has an impact on the entire state of Texas. In terms of TWIA reform, I share your concerns, Mr. Chairman, on the board compos uh, composition. The ratepayers should have the strongest voice on the TWIA board. And to represent a Metcalf's point, they should all be Texans. Um, I also share the concerns about transparency and responsiveness and the, the concerns Representative Spiller about modeling. And I think if we fix that board compensation, we'll look at those models a little bit differently. Uh, the last thing I'll say on reinsurance, we favor the American First policy in H.R. 6944 that's pending in Congress. Happy to talk more about that and anything else through questions. Okay. First, where um, who other than your group, is there any Texas group that talks for the the consumer, the rate payer, the taxpayer. I mean, I see the insurance companies have their groups. I know you are. Is there anybody else? Representative Smithy will tell you he saw me for many years over in the insurance committee. And back when I started this work um, in 2003, um, there were quite a few groups. There were a number of groups. Now we're pretty much down to Texas Watch. Um, we appreciate the, the Office of Public Insurance Council. Other groups can get involved. Texas Appleseed uh, gets involved, AARP Texas. Uh, but we do everything that we can uh, to advocate for the policyholders of this state. Well, I know you do, but it'd be good if any of those groups are listening. I'd like this committee to hear from groups that support the policyholder or the taxpayer. Second. I'm concerned about what I've heard about this widow policy rate. So TWIA came in and said, no, it doesn't apply to them. They don't do that. And to remind the committee, apparently that if you're married and the male dies, the female widow gets categorized as no longer married but single, and the rate goes up. I have also been told that the opposite may not be true, that the widower 
may get to continue to pay the same rate, which doesn't seem to be right at all. What I heard from TDI was that they're aware that some do not do that, but yes, that does exist in Texas. That's an extra hit to anybody on the coast, exactly. whether it has anything to do with TWIA. Are you aware of this insurance policy? Yes, there have been issues with the insurance industry through the years on guidelines that um, would shock the conscience when it comes to public policy. That is an anti-family policy, in my uh, opinion. Um, if you look at how we structure our taxes, we work to make sure that older Texans can stay in their homes. I just want you, are you aware of this widow rate? Yes, we have heard okay. it, yes. So what I'd like you to do is get this committee uh, information on that. I will do that. Thank and, you. And on the other points that I mentioned as well. Thank you. I'll get that to Marco. I question the actuaries. And now I hope every one of them in the world is listening. They've never smelled a rate that they haven't tried to increase. And has Texas Watch done any research or work on actuaries? And are there any actuaries that care about the taxpayer? First, I would ask Mr. Chairman, how do you tell an extroverted actuary? A what? An extroverted actuary. An extra, I'm just talking about actuaries. I don't care about anybody else but the coast. It, I know it, what he's doing. Joke. He's He looks at your shoes when he when he talks to you. I got gotcha. you. Um, have you all done any we research We have worked on with it? other groups to quantify overcharges through the years, and there is a big discrepancy sometimes between what the agencies say and what an independent examination gotcha. of the reviews are. I'm just asking, get the information to this uh, committee, because I want them to see any of the actuary things. I know that Representative Spiller has brought up about reinsurance, but I want all these issues brought. Representative Smith. Yeah, let me... Uh, well, let me ask you a question. You know, and, and we've got another hearing set next month on the Panhandle fires, but something that I, I thought was remarkable was uh, the little town of Fritch, and you probably are familiar with Fritch. Uh, it's, it's between Amarillo and Borger, and uh, they got hit really hard by the fires. Uh, they had several dozen homes, uh, people's homes that were absolutely destroyed, and I found, found out most of those homes had no insurance at all. And the reason they had no insurance is they couldn't afford it. And they had no, they had no TWIA, they really had no place to go. And so these families lost everything. They were literally homeless after that. The people were wonderful up there. They kind of chipped in and, and took care of them, but that was just panhandle hospitality. Mm -hmm. And so this isn't just a coastal problem. And one of the problems is that what makes insurance in our area so high, but besides occasional tornadoes, hailstorm is most insurers buy reinsurance to pay for assessments that they may get through TWIA. And so we carry a, a percentage of that load. So our rates in the panhandle, it's hard to quantify, but my the estimates that I've heard have anywhere from eight to 15% of our rate base is, is going to buy reinsurance for TWIA. And so, what I've said is I don't mind helping in this area. I, I think the coast is very important, but every area of Texas is important. The valley is important. Uh, the West Texas, uh, North Texas, East Texas, they're all important to this state. We're one state. So what I've, uh, I heard somebody mention a, go, a while ago about maybe even going into the rainy day fund, taking some money from rainy day to set up a, a catastrophe fund for uh, any of uh, the high risk areas of the state, uh, do any of you see any any pluses or minuses from doing something like that, assuming you could do it politically? Other states have looked at, at public um, funds helping to support state reinsurance. I think that's definitely an idea worth examining, investing in those funds. Now, if we do that, we need to make sure that any cost savings in your pass on to the rate payer not to industry. Also, uh, you, you know, you were, you were there in 03. Um, we looked at rate regulation in 03. Here we are 20 plus years past. I think it's time to look at it again with the whole state getting hit with these huge 
rate increases. I'm happy to talk more about that on the 17th well, if you'd like. Me. I actually agree with you on that. I think I'm not saying we need to change, but I, I think we probably ought to reexamine. Uh, you know, there was this big debate in 03 between going to a prior approval or file and use, and uh, the, the state opted or the legislature opted to go to file and use. Uh, I carried the bill, but I wasn't totally sold on the concept of file and use. But uh, I, I think it is time to kind of look at that and, and, and evaluate how that's worked and whether it's worked the way uh, we hoped it would. And you reserved the option of prior approval in that bill. Um, yep. It just wasn't used, I think, enough uh, under TDI. But uh, like I said, I'm happy to offer ideas to the committee uh, when we convene again. But um, yes, we, we've talked about reattachment point on reinsurance. Uh, I referenced H.R. 6944 that's pending in Congress right, right now. I, I think of that as an America first policy where we would have a national catastrophic reinsurance program where Treasury would help to establish a threshold so that America is, is taking care of itself. Because Representative Spiller, these reinsurance companies, these are foreign companies. Top three. I looked them up right before I talked. Um, we're looking at Munich, Swiss Re, and Hanover. Those are the top three. That's where our money's going, out of Texas. Or Bermuda or, or, uh, or London. You I like to say, say they go to work and wear straw hats and knee socks. Yeah. yeah. Anybody else, sir? Thank you very much, pal.